Halloween Town in the Nightmare Before Christmas is an interesting place. There's ghosts and ghouls and witches scattered all around, but the sense of hierarchy is all over the place as well. Is it more important to be the Pumpkin King or the Mayor? The realm of Halloween extends far beyond the small town we know it for, too. So could there be someone else above these two individuals? Let's talk about that. But before we do, this video is sponsored by Shudder, which is the haunt of so many thrilling and chilling horror movies, series, and more. Get started streaming the best horror, thriller, and supernatural content. Shudder's expertly curated collection includes must-see titles like Vicious Fun, The Mortuary Collection, and PG, Psycho Gorman, and the hit Creepshow TV series from the executive producer Greg Nicotero of The Walking Dead. I'm looking forward to Behind the Monsters, their new docuseries on the origins of favorite pop culture modern movie monsters, with new episodes weekly and just in time for the spooky season. You can stream Shudder on your favorite devices and even take the screams on the go on your phone. Right now, you can try Shudder for free for 30 days by going to Shudder.com and using promo code ABITFRANK. That's S-H-U-D-D-E-R dot com code ABITFRANK for 30 days of unlimited ghosts and ghouls and things that go bump in the night. When Jack Skellington stumbles into Christmastown, it's very clear that the head of the holiday is Santa Claus, er, Sandy Claus, of course. Everything sort of revolves around this jolly red fellow, so it's obvious who sort of pulls the strings and calls the shots. But we'll come back to this in a moment. In the world of Halloween Town, things seem a bit different. Perhaps it's just that we have a more in-depth look at the town as a whole, but there's a definite power dynamic between the mayor and Jack Skellington. Jack is the crowd favorite. Everyone knows him and most people look up to him, both literally and figuratively. He is very tall. The Pumpkin King seems to be a title that carries great respect, considering that jack-o'-lanterns are super symbolic of Halloween. They embody the concept of the harvest time and the spooky season completely. After the death and rebirth ceremony, everybody congratulates Jack and can't wait for next year. Through the course of the movie, then Jack obsessively tries to combine Christmas and Halloween to make the ultimate showcase for next Halloween. That is, before he tries to ambitiously usurp Christmas. And everyone runs with his wild ideas, no questions asked. For everything, he acts as the leader of the festivities. And obviously by the name Pumpkin King, this makes sense but the leader of all Halloween Town could conflict with the role of mayor, who seems to be the one who actually governs the one town we know exists in the realm of Halloween. For as popular as Jack is, the mayor still is popular himself as he is an elected official, a person selected by the community to keep the entire town running smoothly. Some majority had to vote for him. Now, the mayor is a role that actually didn't exist in the original poem book, at least in terms of a direct callout. A character that looks like the movie mayor is there in the pages, but they are never mentioned by title, merely a visual part of the Christmas show-and-tell scene. Given how Halloween Town has one character that everyone admires and so does Christmas Town, perhaps each has one spiritual being that is the focal or feeling of the holiday. Jack is the true Halloween king, and the mayor runs the society underneath him. In Christmas Town, this role seems to be Sandy, Santa, and perhaps it's another individual's responsibility to run the town and keep toy production on track. My bet's on Mrs. Claus to keep that ship running. This seems pretty balanced. Perhaps the same setup exists in other holiday doors, like Easter, assuming a society is formed there. Just imagine little bunnies and little chicks all over the place. Aww. But there's one thing that sort of makes me question this hierarchy. And it wasn't something I really paid attention to until I was analyzing individual frames of the movie for my Finkelstein's first monster video. Most of the time, we are focused on the foreground in movies, unless the background is deliberately made a focal point. So it's easy to miss things lurking there. But this thing is a big one. In the opening scene of The Nightmare Before Christmas, during the Halloween parade, there are a lot of characters that we don't get to see in the actual movie. One such is Frankenstein's monster, which is something I touched on in a separate video, and is pretty interesting given that Finkelstein exists. But something way more intriguing than Frankenstein's monster existing in this universe is a certain cloaked figure lurking around the town, slipping in and out of the shadows, hiding in the darkness. The Grim Reaper themselves, death. And this character really throws a wrench into things. It'd be easy to write the character off as an easter egg like Frankenstein's monster, given its quick inclusion in the parade as a non-focal point. But unlike Frankenstein's monster, this isn't the only time this character appears. 
They also appear at the Town Hall Christmas Show and Tell meeting that Jack calls once he returns from Christmas Town. The Grim Reaper can be seen lingering in the back of the room, which is super appropriate as death is sort of a looming inevitable thing for everything alive. It makes sense that the embodiment of death would choose an obscure, out of sight, and almost out of mind seat. However, the fact that death chose to attend this hints at something more. The Grim Reaper has stake in this town, and it really makes me wonder how they fit into this world. The Grim Reaper, or Death Personified, is a skeletal figure clothed in black robes, believed to be funerary attire during some of the worst bouts of the Black Plague and carrying a scythe, used in agriculture to harvest a crop or cut it down in preparation for the next season. Extremely metaphorical for death. The Grim Reaper is one of many iconic personifications for death, which, in some cultures, comes to collect a person's soul as they pass on. Sometimes they are cloaked, sometimes not. But death has been around in some depiction as long as beings have been living, and of course, dying. The Grim Reaper is a psychopomp, from the Greek word meaning guide of souls that escorts newly deceased souls from earth to the afterlife. They are not a judge, merely an escort to whatever is beyond. And in theme with Halloween, many believe that the veil separating the realms of the living and the realm beyond is at its thinnest during Halloween. Since death has the ability to appear by someone during their final moments, it would be safe to assume they don't need a door to travel between the human world and Halloween town. Even if more doors exist, as is hinted at by Jack traveling to Halloween Town through a graveyard, death would seemingly need to traverse in a multitude of places near instantaneously. So the fact that they showed up for a meeting to hear about Jack's cross-world adventure shows that perhaps there is concern. We don't know if death brings the deceased to Halloween Town by acting as a guide like we discussed earlier, so perhaps Jack's meddling is sort of throwing off the balance of the world in some regard which could explain why death pays him a visit. Of course, this is all just fun speculation, like maybe the Grim Reaper was an easy to reuse character model, but it brings me back to that sense of hierarchy again. At the foundation, you have the normal residents of a holiday world, like the townsfolk of Halloween Town. Above them, you have the elected official who keeps things running smoothly. Above that, you'd have the holiday spirit, whether Sandy Claus, Jack Skellington, or the Easter Bunny, whoever brings both the spark and theme to the land. And above that, you have the spirits like death that are involved in all different worlds. That is, unless Jack isn't really the true figure that represents Halloween. I mean, it's known that Oogie Boogie had plans to be the new spooky holiday leader. In the Game Boy Advance prequel game, The Pumpkin King, Oogie wants to usurp Halloween Town and make it a new holiday, New Bug Day, in Jack's absence. It's unclear if that position is one that was available for grabs, but Oogie certainly seemed to think that any holiday leader could be replaced if there was a vacancy. Given this, it looks like the role of Pumpkin King is something that can change over time, as attitudes and meanings of the season change for humankind. It isn't forever, nor is that being immortal. Heck, from Jack's lament, we know that in a million years they'll find him, only dust and a plaque that reads here lies poor old Jack. Jack is counting on not being alive, or maybe even perhaps relevant, so sad, in a million years, and all that will remain is what's written about him on the plaque. He will no longer be able to be an interactive spirit Pumpkin King. To support that, Jack Skellington maybe has children later on. If you haven't seen my video on that, I highly recommend checking it out. So if Jack could have children, then that could mean aging is possible for him. Otherwise, Halloween Town would get super crowded very fast. I suppose you could argue this not to be the case, but his children at some point have to grow up, maybe. The whole children concept comes from an encounter that Jack has with Sandy many years later after the events of Nightmare Before Christmas. But I digress. What if the Pumpkin King, the true king of Halloween, is supposed to be death? Ever present, never forgotten, undying death. A consistent icon ruling from the shadows. And because of death's extended absences in Halloween Town due to the never-ending responsibilities across all the world, Jack Skellington was the one to fill in for that role, an itinerant pumpkin king, for as long as he lasts. It would kind of make sense, given that Oogie Boogie sees it as a renameable position up for grabs, and it totally alters my perception of Halloween Town in The Nightmare Before Christmas. The true ruler of Halloween lingers in the shadows and only appears when it's time for a grand celebration when the veil between the worlds of the living and the dead is at its thinnest, or when the balance of the world is out of whack and teetering towards peril when the holiday worlds collide. It's quite a lot to think about. 
But let me know your thoughts on this little but kind of big detail. Is the Grim Reaper the true ruler of Halloween Town, guiding it like death itself from the shadows just out of sight? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you, friends and fiends, for overthinking more nightmare lore. If you enjoy this, please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. I'll see you soon. Stay spooky.